This little mini PC has an awesome processor, fast memory, and it can even do things like play esports titles at 4K without dropping quality settings. You could not do that with previous generations of these. And what's more, this little unit is way better than the previous generation, and in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly why. Hey guys, this is Patrick from SDH, and this is a Minis Forum UM790 Pro. This little system is based on an AMD Ryzen 9 processor with RDNA 3 graphics. As part of our STH mini PC series, I wanted to take a look at this one because frankly, a lot of you have recommended we do so. Now, before we get too far in this, I just wanna point out that Minis Forms did send us this unit, but they're not paying for this or anything like that. Uh, we get to say whatever we want, they're not seeing this before it goes live, like everything we do on STH. Also, the unit that they sent was a pretty base level configuration, so we actually had to go augment it and uh, you know get a couple components, throw them in here to be able to show you some interesting things with the system that we weren't able to do with just the base config. Hey guys, it's Future Me. I just wanna point out real quick that just as we were about to go and publish this video, Alex was almost done editing, Brian and I were just kinda of sitting here setting up uh, some other project that I'll tell you about a little bit later, and, uh, and all of a sudden a box came which had a brand new minis forum that I ordered, which is the UM790 Pro as well, but you're gonna see that there are a couple differences. So I'm gonna interject throughout this video and just kinda of show you some of the things that are a little bit different. But I just wanna say thank you to our STH YouTube members. If you wanna help us out and support us, we can actually buy stuff to throw in these and like, kinda of Show you different configs well you can find that link down in the description it's super appreciated so we can do some ambitious projects Okay, let's start with the outside of the system and let's start with the front of this because the first thing you're gonna see is definitely the two USB 4 ports. Now these USB 4 ports are awesome. One fun example is that you can run display port displays off of these, which means that these are actually our second and third display outputs. I think the specs on these say they can actually do up to like 8K 60 on these ports. So that's, that's absolutely awesome. The other big thing though is that you could use them for devices like these. You'll see over here that we have an eGPU chassis and literally you just go and take the eGPU chassis and then you go hook it up to your USB 4 port and you have a working eGPU solution. And what you'll see now is that we're actually powering this Minis Forum unit over the Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 port because this does power delivery in and this is now connected to our eGPU. Now, of course, having an eGPU powering this unit is always kind of fun, but what about networking? Maybe you wanna do something like, I don't know, have 10 gig networking. So we have a Thunderbolt 3 10 gig ethernet adapter and you can actually just plug this in over here. And now you have 10 gigabit ethernet and an eGPU all from these front USB ports. And aside from the power button, you also have the combo headset jack. So if you need audio, you can plug in and do that. Now, beyond that kind of front panel, there's a bunch of other stuff, but I wanna just kind of show you around real quick. So uh, on this side, you have a vent. On the, uh, on the other side, you have a vent. On the top, it says uh, minis forums. And then on the bottom, you get something that is pretty cool. This is just a pretty open mesh kind of great thing that's on the bottom of this. And the reason that this is so open is that there's now a fan here that's used for the SSD and also the DDR5 cooling. So that's a big upgrade that we'll show you when we get inside. Hey guys, on the new one that we got, the Minis Forum on the top is like kind of like a metallic finish and it has a little logo versus this one that just says Minis Forum. Now on the bottom, there's a small difference, which is the production model has a little label that says you have to disconnect the cables when you lift the lid. The pre-production model that we were sent does not have that. But why not look at the back? And so when we look at the back of this, you're gonna see a number of features, starting with, of course, the 19 volt power input. We'll talk about power and cooling a little bit later. Now the next feature is that we get two HDMI 2.1 ports, and I think these are spec for something like 4K at 144 hertz. Next, we have our two and a half gig ethernet LAN, which is great. And then we get four USB type A ports. Who doesn't like a ton of type A USB ports? They're so useful and you get four of them with the system. And not only are there four of them, but they're also 10 gigabit per second ports, which means they're also pretty fast. And if you have things like hubs or something like that, you can totally go do that and you get a decent amount of bandwidth here. So between the four ports on the back and then the two ports on the front, there's a lot of connectivity if you have like external devices that you could put onto this little tiny system. But that kind of begs the question, like what's inside of this? So let's get to that. Okay, now getting inside the system is something that I am uh, frankly not too crazy about. And that's the fact that there are four rubber feet and they're nice little rubber feet. But one of the challenges is that if you wanna get inside to actually service something like, you know, put more RAM or something like that, well, you have to pull the feet off. And over time, these things are just gonna lose their adhesion. And so I, I just don't, uh, 
I just don't really like that. It's just such a pain. It's just not clean. And I, I wish that instead what Minis Forum did was that they had a solution where they would have like the ability to just like make a hole so you can pull the screw out and in just through the hole in the little rubber foot, right? Like that just makes a lot more sense. And I wish that they did that. Now, once you take out the four screws, you had to kind of pry this thing, which I don't really like. I wish it was a little bit cleaner, just a solution to pull this off. Like if there's a little tab or something, that would be nice. And then, uh, and then you're going to start seeing some things that are very different in the system than in previous gens. So uh, the first one is just right here. What you have is a fan plus a cooling plate for the SSDs. One of the challenges though, is that you have your two Wi-Fi antenna leads, plus you have the fan lead here. So, so it makes it kind of hard to actually pull this out. You can still work around it, but it's, it is a little bit of a pain. But one little fun thing on this SSD cooler and like RAM cooler fan unit thing is that this is actually attached to the bottom part of the chassis with you wouldn't guess this, but spring loaded screws. So you can actually push this in just a little tiny bit. So that way, I guess if you're like trying to get a good contact, but not too much contact on your NVMe SSDs, well, these things are actually spring loaded. But once we get inside, there is some amazing stuff in here. Let me give you some examples. First off, there are two DDR5 and these are SODIM slots, but you don't just get like DDR5, like 4,800. These things actually are running at DDR5 5,600 speeds, which is awesome for just the overall memory bandwidth. And that's very important when you get to things like, you know, when you're playing games or using that iGPU, you really wanna have a lot of memory performance. Now in our system, it came with two eight gig DIMMs from Minis Forums and frankly, um, 16 gigs with like a pretty high end eight core processor feels like a little bit too little. And so personally, I like the idea of having either a 32 gig configuration, or if you want, what we did was we just went straight up to, uh, you know, the, the 64 gig configuration in two DIMMs. Now there are two different options for that. Of course, you can get something that's like a 4,800 and DDR5 4,800 will work in the system, but you can also get faster DDR5 5,600 DIMMs and those work perfectly well too. Now, the other crazy thing about the system is that we have two Kingston SSDs and that sounds really exciting, but the way that Minis Forum sent it to us was they sent it with two 256 gig SSDs. On the plus side, it does show that you could put two PCI Gen 4 SSDs here. So that's awesome. But on the negative side, I would never put a 256 gig SSD in something like this. I would start maybe at half a terabyte, but realistically these days, probably one terabyte or two terabytes. We'll put a couple of recommendations in terms of what we've used in this system down in the description. I'm just gonna point out real quick that this is a configuration that Minis Forum sent. It's not necessarily what you would get if you ordered it, or especially if you ordered a bare bones. For the production unit, we ordered it with 64 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. We got Kingston SODIMs here. We have the same memory cooler. And then also we have a one terabyte NVMe SSD. It was a Kingston unit as well. And the performance was okay at best. Now under one of those M.2 SSDs, you get a Intel Wi-Fi 6E solution, which is awesome. I love having Wi-Fi 6E and I wish all of the systems that we were testing had Wi-Fi 6E, but some of them are still coming with Wi-Fi 6. It just means that you get faster Wi-Fi speeds if your infrastructure can support it. Now we did pull the entire motherboard out so you can see the other side and just kind of see the cooler on this. Overall, this cooler did a pretty good job that we'll talk about when we get to our power consumption and noise. Now, probably one of the most exciting things about this Minis Forum unit is the processor. This system is based on the AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS, which is an eight core 16 thread processor with 12 RDNA 3 GPU cores. Now, the big deal with that is that not only can this processor boost up to 5.2 gigahertz, the new RDNA 3 graphics are actually good enough to play games on. The Asus ROG Ally, the Z1 Extreme, also has eight cores, 12 RDNA 3 cores. I mean, like it is a similar type of CPU, except we have different, you know, voltage frequency and like TDP and all that kind of stuff because we have a bigger chassis also has better cooling. And so, you know, if you're just kind of talking about like, you know, what is a similar to, I think that that's a pretty good way to think about it. You have a, like a higher power ROG ally in the Minis Forum UM790 Pro. 
With mini PCs, one of the most important things by far is the power consumption and noise. Frankly, if you wanted to have something that was really, really high power, well, you just go get a giant workstation. So part of this is you wanna have something that's close to you that you can put on a desk, isn't super loud, doesn't generate tons of heat, and you know, just doesn't cost a lot to run. And so I wanna talk about the Minis 4 and power consumption because I was just completely shocked by this one. Now, while this is booting, let's just talk about some of the easy things about the power consumption side. So the first thing is that this comes with a pretty giant, I mean, this thing feels hefty, and this is a 120 watt power brick. Frankly, this is not using anywhere close to 120 watts, but I'll show you in a second how much it is. Now, in terms of idle power consumption, this thing is actually pretty darn good. You'll see that we're in that six, five, six, seven watt range, which is pretty reasonable for a system like this. In fact, it's probably one of the better mini PCs that we've seen, especially with this fast of a processor and GPU on board. But the one interesting thing about the Minis Forum is that it's not necessarily silent. So what I'm going to do is I want to let you hear this thing at idle. And then I also want to show you just kind of decibel meters. So you can kind of get some frame reference for that. We're going to try something different and put a little action camera over here in front of the decibel meter. So you can actually kind of see that a little bit better when I'm not speaking. And just so you know, the distance that we're using is actually we're putting the unit over here when we're taking this recording of the different sound levels. And the reason for that is it's basically an arm length, which is I figure about what it would be on a desk. So let me let you hear what this sounds like real quick. And that's like basically held directly up to the mic. Overall, I don't really find this to be too annoying. It's definitely audible, even in our 34 dBA noise floor studio. And it adds, you know, maybe a one or two dBA to that, which is not too, too bad at idle. Now what we're doing is let's stress this to see how much more noise we get, but also I wanna show you how much more power this uses. So now we have this under a 100% load and just kind of showing you this real quick, you're gonna see that we're just over 80 watts and that kind of 80 to 85 watt range, depending on exactly what we're running in terms of a mix, but that's a pretty reasonable range for this. Just wanna note real quick that that is lower than what we saw on the B-Link PCs. And that's important when we talk about the performance of these. I also wanted to let you listen to this just so you can kind of hear it. Now, interestingly enough, overall, this is still lower noise than the B-Link GTR7 Pro, which you can see over here. So it's actually a lower noise than maybe its direct competitor, but on a performance side, it's probably closer to the GTR7. But with that, let's get to performance. Okay, I have to admit, I was super skeptical in terms of performance of this unit. The reason is that when we did the UM690 Pro, that definitely saw some major thermal problems, uh, especially on cooling the RAM, and that led to performance problems when we we're doing things like even playing League of Legends. I just wanna show you real quick what the 1080 and 4K League of Legends looks like. Frankly, this was very playable. We were somewhere in that like 40 to 75 FPS range for most of the 4K gaming experience. And then when we got to the 1080 experience, you saw that we had frame rates usually above 120 FPS or 110 FPS. So that is extremely playable and we had everything set to very high. So, you know, if you were to even push those settings down a little bit, you'd probably be way better off in terms of performance. So, but overall, I mean, you don't really have to sacrifice that visual quality to be able to play on this. It was a pretty good experience. But that led us to something that was really interesting was that the performance of this was a bit lower than what we saw on the B-Link units. I just wanna show you real quick, the B-Link GTR 7 and 7R Pro comparison to this unit. And we're gonna look at you know, Geekbench 5 and Geekbench 6. The reason I wanna show you this, uh, these comparisons real quick is just because I think that you know we automatically assume that if you have the same processor, you're gonna be within maybe two, three, five percent of you know any systems with the same processor are gonna be very close. This was the case where that was not the case. And the reason for that, I think comes down to something really simple. And that's, this is using less power than even the B-Link GTR 7 with the Ryzen 7 instead of the Ryzen 9. We're not getting up into that like 90 watt range. Instead, we're sitting just a little over 80 watts at maximum. And so what I think is that the Minis Forums folks have tuned this better for lower power consumption, but not necessarily getting all that performance. Now, of course, there are BIOS options where you can go and push up that performance. But if you do that, you're also gonna increase your fan speeds and you're gonna get more noise. So I think that this is good from a noise perspective 
and it's really tuned for lower power, whereas the B-Link is really tuned a little bit more for like all out performance. But something I am super happy about with this unit is that this unit is not seeing those weird memory throttling things that we saw on the UM690 Pro. This is a huge upgrade in my mind because we're just not getting that thermal throttling because of this fan. And I know folks are gonna wonder if there's a difference between the pre-production and the production model that we got. The performance was very close between the two. However, we did get a faster, slightly faster NVMe SSD, so we should point that out. We also swapped components between the two units to make sure that the numbers that we got were valid even in the production systems, and they seem to be. I will just point out though real quick that you can tune these things, and we did tune the new production one with a little bit more aggressive settings, and you can get it to go a little bit faster and be a lot closer to the B-Link units. However, you do end up having higher power consumption to do that. Still, we like to test things as stock because that is how most folks use them. Okay, so for all these videos, we always have a key lessons learned section. I think this one is super straightforward. What I like about this unit is the fact that it is a little bit more compact than the B-Link units. I like the fact that they've upgraded that cooling so you don't get those weird performance things that we got with the UM690 Pro. The other thing I really like about this is the fact that it has a good set of IO. I mean, you know, you have your USB 4 ports on the front. You have things like a two and a half gig Ethernet port. I would have liked to see a second one, but sure, you get at least one, and at least it's not a one gig port at this point. And then also, you know, you get two HDMI, so it's easy to go and hook these up to just TVs or whatever you want. And you also get four USB type A ports, which is awesome. And I know some folks are going to say like, oh, it only has two and a half gig Ethernet and want to have 10 or something. And if you really want 10 gig Ethernet, go get a Thunderbolt adapter, stick it in one of the USB ports and you're ready to go. So overall, from the hardware perspective, I think that the Minis Forums folks did a great job. But the one thing that I think that Minis Forums does way better than B-Link and like leagues above what B-Link does is that you can get this unit in a bare bones. You might ask, well, why do I care? Why would I want a bare bones? And simply the reason reason is if you wanted to go do something like you know put a 64 gig upgrade kit these ddr5 upgrade kits are not super expensive and you're able to go put them into a system like this and you're not paying for that extra ram that you have to take out this particular configuration is a really good example of where I would do that because it only has 16 gigabytes. And also a lot of the SSDs that ship with these mini PCs are mediocre at best. Rarely do you get a really high performance SSD because the vendors are just trying to hit like a capacity point at a price point. And so they're not going to spend like an extra hundred dollars on a capacity point just to go get, you know, way more performance, right? And so I really like the fact that Minis Forms let you buy a bare bones and then customize it to however you want it. I think that is awesome. And hey guys, I hope you like this look at this Minis Forum UM790 Pro. I think it's a pretty awesome little system. I hope you did too. And if you did like this video, well, hey, why don't you share it with some of your friends, but also check out some of our other videos. You can also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.